Today, I've got over 70 linear switches to compare. A variety of lubed ones, pre-lubed, unlubed, stock, everything, silent. And I've got my resident switch expert, Randy, with me once again because I'm a noob. Now, remember, everything here is opinion or mostly opinion with a slice of fact and maybe some knowledge. We'll be dropping some knowledge along the way. So let's welcome Randy. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello again. We've got a ton of linear switches my opinion about them is that they're basically all the same except some are smoother than others and some are more rattly and some make louder sounds it's easier compared to tactile and compared to clickies i like linear switches a lot just because you notice nuances about the switch materials a lot more i think just as a critic you can kind of tell a lot more about the switch when it's a linear type just because there aren't other things that kind of distract you you don't have to worry about clicks you don't have to worry about a tactile bump it's just how smooth is it how heavy is it? How does it sound? Now you get to worry about how long is the stem pole, but that's pretty much it. You're going to have to educate me about materials as we encounter some new ones. I don't do any of that. I'm just like, oh, that looks pretty. That feels nice. Yeah. Let's start with the kale fried egg. Someone forced me to buy this during a stream. And I was like, is that even a real switch? And turns out it is. And it does look like a fried egg. It's very nice. These are like a kale box with a, they have the new universal symmetric housing so that means that they're cherry north facing compatible they're impervious mm -hmm. to north facing interference 42 gram actuation and 60 gram bottom so similar to red probably most similar to kale box red uh, yeah north facing cherry if you look at the side profile yeah like that um, you'll see that it's the same shape, like north facing versus south facing. Oh, that's fancy. And then you still have your LED slot to shine RGB yeah. through. I yeah. like that. Is this a silent switch? Might be. I think it's a silent switch. Ew. <laughs> That's sort of gross. It's not a bad silent switch, but it's it, kind of mushy. It, yeah. Like... Here we go. The silent switch of prettiness. So it is a brass Whoa. plate in a polycarbonate case, right? It's sort of loud for a silent switch. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it. And silent switches are inherently a little bit more scratchy than non-silent switches for some reason. Hail. I'm so biased. Maybe I should think about this in the sense if I were to like a silent switch, but it's a box switch, so you can't lube it, right? Lubing does help minimally, but uh, you won't. It won't benefit a box switch nearly as much as it does like a, a regular switch. So lubing won't help it too much. I would put it in D tier. It's good. It's useful, but I can't help it much, even with a lot of love. Next, I think we'll do alpacas. Alpacas. Right. When I got into the hobby, was sort of a big deal they were like really cool yeah. always sold out you could never get your hands on it and i never got my hands on it until now yeah alpacas were kind of just like like if you want to pay a little bit more than like twice the price i guess of gateron yellows then you'll get like the tier one smoothness switch jwk it's like the one that everyone makes the mold off of and all this stuff yeah i mean it's still a great switch but it's kind of boring i think now at this point it's been a couple years the one thing that got me like questioning them was that people said that you need to film them and back when i first learned how to film a switch i was like no just no way. Not my thing. Needs a lot of love. I think they're really good stock, but yeah, definitely a, more of a like a modders or enthusiast type switch. They're boring, but they just need lube and film. And they're, then they're pretty good. Oh, do you know the price for them? I believe uh, 50 cents or 55 cents a piece. That's not bad. I'm going to put them in C tier since they need lube and film. You get to hear it. Well, the brass plate really accentuates everything. Okay, silent alpacas. Pretty similar to alpacas, except they are mushy. Just what you like in a silent switch. If you are an enthusiast and you want like the best out of your silent switch, silent alpaca is probably gonna be one of the top tier ones. Um, when you put, when you lube it with 205G0, put some desk keys on it, it's deathly silent. Let's hear, th I think this is stock. I mean, it's way better than the fried egg. So this one's a oh, fried yeah. egg and then this one's the alpaca. That's, that's nice. If I was into silent switches, that would be it. I don't like tactile silent, but linear silent, mmm, nice. So silent alpacas, sort of nice. Put some desk keys filming it, lube it, and then boom, got yourself the best silent switch. Maybe, maybe the best silent switch. I'm putting it all the way up in mm, A. 
A Let, for alpaca. Yeah, A for well, A for alpaca, comma silent. <laughs> <Yeah> . If you had to pick a linear switch that you would use on the reg, which one would it be? Probably Bolsa Supply Zaku. Nice gray housing. They're they're、uh, modeled after the Zaku from Gundam long stem pole. A nice long stem bottom out when you put them in other housings and stuff.、It、has a nice double stage 63 and a half gram spring. So it's a snappy return. I think they're pretty fun to type on as linears go. It's fancy. I like long stem switches a lot. The bottom out sounds、mm, very nice. They're lightly pre lubed, so I don't think I don't think you need to lube them. I didn't notice any spring ping in mine. Pretty good to go stock. Ooh, pre lubed.、Like、How much do they cost? Fifty five cents a piece, but they sell out like within a half an hour of getting in stock. Holy cow! So you'd have to set up Discord notifications and then wake up in the middle of the night. Zaku's with a long stem. That's nice. It feels very smooth too. Zaku is going in S tier then, especially the pre lubed.、Oh, Throw it right、well. into a keyboard and be like, I'm good. They've got to be super desirable. Yeah, I'm thinking about putting them in my next build. Ooh. Okay, so that would be what you would put in your daily linear driver. I I'm using a daily linear keyboard, and it's got a it's Garon Milky Yellow Pros in them. Very cheap, very affordable. Sounds nice. Solid it's a solid solid switch. You know, I have the ability to use very many switches, and yet I choose those.、So、they're good. They're good. They look like a Garon Milky Yellow. I mean, not much to say. Like a yellow with a milky. Monkey body and the pros are pre-lubed, which is my favorite part about it. You don't need to do anything; just plop them in your board. You're good. I think you can buy twenty-five for six dollars on Divinity. I mean, it's pretty good on the brass plate. <laughs> <laughs> Yellows are almost more legendary than alpacas.、So. Yeah, they are. So to me, you know, Gara Milky Yellow Pros are in S tier. They're the best of the best. Punch is way above its weight class, you know. Yeah,、uh, let's look at some fancy ones. For a while, I really like the TTC switches, all of them. I think they're amazing. I don't know the differences between them, other than like spring weights or something. For these ones, I think you have what an Ace, a Speed Silver, and a Gold. Old、pink. Yes, an ace. Let me take them out. TTC Ace is gonna be slow curve linear,、uh, so pretty consistent feeling, pretty comfortable.、Uh, speed Silver, 45 gram actuation, 55 gram bottom, and it's a speed switch, so you get the actuation right at the top, one millimeter. Ooh,、um, wow. It's also It's also going to be more expensive. It's like 80 cents to 90 cents a piece. And then TTC Gold Pink. It's a super light one, also pre-lubed. A lot of people like using it stock. It's way too light for me, but yeah, that's all. That's very subjective. The thing I like about these is that they sound really loud. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing. But they're like really smooth and loud, and there's like no stem wobble. Stem wobble. Put it in your keyboard, and you start pressing around. It feels nice. I didn't know how fast these silver ones actuated. That's amazing. Amazing. If you're a gamer, you know, consider it. Yeah, let's see, gold, pink, silver, and then ace. Very smooth, all smooth. I would recommend them all day, except maybe not the silver, depending on who you are and what you do with it. Dang, I feel like linears are so easy. They just all belong in A and B and S. Bad ones. There's a lot of bad ones. Just not these. These are good. What's a bad one? This isn't a bad one, but Kale sent me their new Box V2 switches, and I have the Box V2 Red. It looks a little bit different than the than the normal one. You know, they've got a darker housing there. I think it's also pre-lubed. They didn't send me many stats on it, but I gave it a feel, and I was like,、hmm, "That's pretty good." They look edgy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they look yeah. sort of emo. It's very cool. Box reds and a lot of the box linears. I think they're pretty solid switches, even to be used stock. Sometimes the springs will ping, but they are lightly pre-lubed.、Um, they have that dustproof element, the IP56 rating, you know. So they're good if you have like a lot of dust or a lot of pets or anything like that around. Ooh, they were made、yes. for pets. I've got know, a like, lot of those. <laughs> Yeah, they're pretty solid, but in today's meta, for a lower price, you can get a smoother pre-lube, pretty standard linear. So if you put it up close to your ear, it doesn't sound as good. But not a bad sound. Could use a little bit of love. Being a kale box, I don't like giving those switches love. They're a pain in the butt to take apart、yeah. and put back together. It's just, ugh. Where are these going? These are going in. 
C or D. All right, well, we'll give him the lower one. Either either love him stock or don't do anything to him. Uh, everyone wants Aqua Kings. I'm personally biased against Aqua Kings. I've gone through a lot of Aqua King batches, three or four batches, and they are so inconsistent. Whenever you like bottom out, sometimes some switches crunch, some don't, some make that like weird bloop bloop sound it's like there's too much lube yeah. here obviously <laughs> the over lube like wet fart poppiness yeah sound. yeah exactly a wet fart that's what it sounds like i feel like i have a right to be biased against these they look super cool they're pretty they're pre-lubed i personally do not recommend them just because they're so expensive if you're lucky and you buy these you'll like them but if you're not lucky and you buy these then you may feel like you've been scammed i think these sound great in your keyboard contest they won right they, they won did the, they won 500 dollars everglades yeah. they look great they are definitely expensive yeah you can hear it all. you can hear the bloop bloops it's just not good it's not <laughs> good I, I don't like them they're so ugh. it's weird right because like if you get a good batch i think then they're really good your... yeah they're yeah, really if good one, if you don't get one it's got to be like c or d i it's know it's just work. e for bloop <laughs> <laughs> I'll put this in B tier. Then there's there's obvious caveats about it. If you like the blue bloops, you can do that. If you don't, then you know don't do it. Creams, they're popular. Creams kind of similar to the uh, Aqua Kings that we just looked at. They're made of the same material. It should mean more friction, but the friction is actually in this case working in your favor for break-in because palm is touted as the self-lubricating plastic right yeah i mean I, I when i first heard that i thought it was bs yeah i've tried lubing them like i'm the person I, I i put it all into a keyboard like turn it all upside down and then just start slam <laughs> slamming it against the table trying to break it in i decided it wasn't worth my time and was like yeah i just lube these instead i'd say they sound pretty nice they're only really popular because of that tifu video mm -hmm. right tifu teha yeah uh yeah but i'm um, they're, they're made of the palm plastic the self-lubricating people say it's a myth it's kind of because you're not understanding the basis of self-lubricating plastic. I just had to look this up as well. Yeah, I, I, I don't even know what that means. So how many how many key presses does it take? People say minimum break-in is like 10,000 actuations. A oh, lot of that's, the- That's a lot. Like the 100-year creams or 1,000-year creams or whipped creams, or they're usually broken into 70,000 or 100,000 actuations. So used creams should, it, it cost more than new creams because they've been broken in. It's like vintage. There's actually a <laughs> graph there's predictable uh, yes there's like predictable i would pattern. like to look at it i mean this I mean, there's a lot of key you know science terms here a lot of f's yeah. And, yeah i love the creams i don't care if people think i'm basic i like the creams <laughs> on the 65 cents to 70 cents per switch side yeah they are expensive they're super useful though you can use them for franken switches or you know just use them. It's sort of above and beyond, if you ask me. I would put in S tier. Creams. Ah, oh, they just sound so nice. I don't care what you say, they're S tier to me. What's the difference between the creams and the box creams? It's just that. It's the box version of a cream, but it's a much lighter spring. It's a 55 gram spring bottom out. Also long stem, but it's a box switch, so it doesn't really feel the same way. It doesn't really sound the same way. Can't really franken switch it except with other, other box switches and probably only other round stem box switches these don't seem as great as creams they don't um, they don't look as great they don't feel as great they have the same thing as the uh fried egg though where it's the um the universal housing yeah so that's the, that's the draw that's a bonus these are box creams and then these are these are regular creams I mean, box creams are significantly worse. They're not good. I think these belong in uh, either D or F. Probably D tier. Got some benefits. We can try a Duroc Palm. This one, it's a palm housing, just like the kale cream is. But the stem is a smoother material. It's an Umwhip blend called P3. P3? What does that mean? It's just a Umwhip plus some other materials, like basically in a blend to make it more stable um, when they're making the molds is it pre-lubed or is it stock stock wow um, it feels I, lubed yeah that's the that's the beauty <laughs> of like boom whip on any like pretty much anything really
Wow. Feels extremely smooth. You can't tell, but it does have spring ping. Ooh, deeper sounding cream. Oh, you're right. It doesn't have the as as like intense of a bottom out that you get from creams. There are palms. Hmm. Needs spring spring lube, and that's about it. They're nice. I will put them in A tier. Since you're spending an outrageous amount of money on keyboards and keyboard switches anyways, consider using Honey to save money. Honey is your money-saving superhero. It lives at the very top corner of your browser, and whenever you're shopping, Honey will just fly on by and turn on. And that's how easy it is to use Honey. Now, when I was shopping for all these switches for all the tier lists, I went to countless stores everywhere. I shopped in Australia, I shopped in Singapore, just all over the internet, and and I considered using Honey. There were savings here, there were savings there. It's not everywhere and it's not guaranteed, but if you're gonna spend the money anyways, why not try to save some while you're at it too? It works on websites that you're already shopping for and it's not just keyboard stuff. You can use it for clothes, for food delivery, for cameras, for instruments, whatever it may be. You can use Honey. You can get Honey for free using the link down below or go to joinhoney.com slash switch and click. That's joinhoney.com dot com slash switch and click now back to more switches this one this one's pretty i think this is a taxi uh, yeah that's a jadeite or diamond yeah they're the same switch they, they it just has two names oh Jadeite they're the diamond. same thing yeah so that one uh, funny that you choose that one that's also an umwhip stem and an umwhip top the stem i think might have a little bit more stem wobble because it's pure umwhip. yeah there's definitely some movement there it looks very pretty needs a little love too but it feels smooth very smooth mm. these are hard the the ones where it's in between are very hard to rank because they all sound great they all feel great where would you put this <laughs> probably a solid b tier maybe a tier b tier just because it's so smooth and it can be used pretty uh pretty good uh stock um, very smooth. you might have to you might have to lube the spring just because of the keycap fitment thing i'm not going to put it any higher than that Mm, all right. So. Yeah, the stem wobble is pretty intense. E tier it is. Okay, what's another switch that uh, has gotten a lot of uh, talk lately? These Garon China Joys, or also CJ. known as yeah CJs. Very pretty. I feel like they've gotten a lot of uh, hype lately. I've been seeing their name a lot. These were made by Gateron for the China Joy Expo in China. They're, I don't know if they're limited or not, but they are a really clacky kind of uh, ink hybrid. Uh, they're north facing compatible because they got that notch, but they're, yeah, they're on the clackier side, not not really sounding like a normal ink. I like inks too, but they're they're quite heavy. Yeah, these are a lot more manageable. It's a 50, it's a 50 gram actuation and a 62 gram bottom, closer to like an alpaca. So here's the China Joy and here's the ink. Clacky. Depends on your taste then. Yeah, I don't believe these are pre-lube. Oh, they need a little help. Not in A or S. Probably B. Unless you don't like clacky. Then it would go in F tier. I would put it in B. Yeah, that's a fair ranking, I think. There's a lot of B tier stuff. I know, I think. There's a lot of B tier stuff. These two look really interesting. The Moe Studio Queens and the the OA switches. They're so beautiful. Both of those, but yeah, both they're really great looking switches, that transparent stuff. The Queen is a triple stage 68 gram spring. It's going to feel super stiff. Uh, and then the Wuke Original Aspiration, that's kind of interesting because uh, the bottom you uses an umwhip blend similar to tangy so it's sort of like a blue umwhip unlooped or a blue tangy that's been unlooped all right let me listen to it not a fan they feel smooth yeah. just need, they just need some help they're both quite heavy they are beautiful switches both of these i have to admit i got them basically to put into jars <laughs> as decoration yeah okay let's listen to the uh, oa and then the the queens 
quite stiff super stiff they're pretty i don't know if i would put them in a keyboard they're pretty i'd put them in c tier needs a lot of loving to get them to the point where you would want to use them both in c tier nothing's in f tier yet if any of these things were gonna make it in f tier what do you think it would be oh i know gateron oh. clears they belong oh, in f tier they're terrible yeah. ultra rally super quiet I mean, they're not, not quite super light, super duper lightweight. You even like not rest your finger and you're like, oh, I accidentally pressed it. Oh, no. They're horribly terrible to use. These belong in an F tier instantly. <laughs> I've, I've been waiting for this moment. Uh, sweet justice. Boom, there you go. <laughs> I feel evil now. They don't sound good either. Come on, we have the pink ones. I, I, they're not called pink. I think they're called rose red. Yeah, so we should have six of them at least. Okay. Uh, rose and red. Radiant red. And then matcha. And then a bunch of jelly ones. Yeah. Jelly white, jelly pink, and a like a, a jelly black. I have to look at the housings because they look so similar to our variety of Akko Linears. They're very pretty. There's also a, a normal white that's not a jelly white. I don't I think it's called vintage white. But I yeah. used it in a build so I do not have it with me. But between the other whites and the jelly whites, they're not the same. <laughs> They're not the same yeah. at all. <laughs> the other whites, they had like hill or the latch style housing. And this has an MX style housing. I like the Echo jellies a lot, actually. Uh, jelly, yeah. jelly black. Yeah, I think these um, were really popular. They're cheap, too. Yeah, they're a great price. They're made by KTT. KTT is like a new Chinese manufacturer, but they're known for making great switches at the price. Actually. They make everything? Yeah. Ooh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, they make everything. Yeah, but these are pretty much like that. White is the lightest. Pink is the middle one. Black is the heaviest for the jellies. Rose red is the lightest for the regular CS. Radiant red is the middle and matcha green is heaviest. Oh, they're but just weights. Even... Wow. There's barely any difference between them then other than looks and yeah. spring weights. And then uh, the CS ones are cool since you can fit them into like red dragon keyboards and stuff. Let's start with jelly white, jelly black, rose red, Matcha green, radiant red, and jelly pink. They don't sound a whole lot different. I feel like there, there are subtleties between them. Like the radiant red is a little bit deeper and like bolder than the other ones. But very similar nonetheless. So I will rank them all accordingly. So they are all pretty, they're all stock. They need a little bit of help. I personally don't like opening up the CS switches just because of their latch. They're easier to open than Odamu though. I'll give them that. And they're still annoying. Yeah. I would put them all into B tier. I think they're pretty good. For the price, especially. Cost. Yeah. Right, yeah. Boom. B tier. These do not make bloop bloops. See, what's another another switch that I would put into F tier? Okay, this one is a... I feel like it could be a little controversial, depending on what side you pick. But, and novel keys dry switches they're dry reds yellows blacks whatever i like i don't them. I, I don't i i like them too but i also don't like them like they're very average -y. for what they are i like them but uh i'm not willing to use them <laughs> <laughs> for me it's like these basically to me are j wicks the silks and the dries so, so the dries to me are basically unlube somewhat budget uh, J wicks or, or JWK switches. So they're pretty good if you're gonna loop them yourself. Yeah, like apply a more even layer of 205G than what would come on the silks kind of thing. They were like $5 to $6 per 10 from Novel Keys. And oh, then that's I think, nice. I got mine in a mystery switch bundle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If, but if you're getting them in a mystery switch, I think they're super worth it. Oh, they're super yeah. good it's, if you get them in a mystery switch. I got like yeah. 110 for, I don't know, 10 bucks. Very cheap. That's why I went through the effort of looping them. I was like, these are a steal. <laughs> Let us take a listen. 
They're nice. I like them, but I also don't like them because I hate lubing nowadays with a passion. I think the silks do sound pretty nice, to be fair. Yeah, they do. And uh, from what I've seen, I only have one batch of silk reds, but they're very consistent. I would put them in B tier as well. Everything's going to go in B tier today. Okay, let's look at the SP Star Meteor Whites. I bought a whole pack of them recently because someone requested them from uh, like a build thing that I had to do a while back. Are they nice? Let's see. Yeah, so SP Star Meteor Whites, they're made by... I mean, the brand is from Leopold, the guys that make the, the great keyboards, the great Topra keyboards and stuff. Um, these ones, I think they're actually manufactured by JWK. The molds look exactly like alpaca molds, but they're made from full nylon. So these ones were, have been really popular for like a nice clacky refined alternative to hyperglides. They look a lot like gray creams. They're very loud. Do they have a long stem? No, they don't actually. Oh, they're wow. just a normal stem. But wow. it's, uh, yeah, just the nylon. The nylon is very loud. <laughs> So loud. I don't know what yeah, it's, it's it's really like a weird rattly scratchy sound. There's something there. It could be the spring crunching at the bottom. I'm not a fan. For me, they're just way too light. I can't use them because of the spring weight. But uh yeah, they're they're on the clacky, clackier side. Yeah, it sounds very crunchy. So if I just replace the spring, will that fix the crunch? Uh you should, or if you relube it. Yeah, give it a more even relube. There could also just be a little bit of too much lube on the pole. Mm -hmm. So it's creating like a weird suction type of thing. It needs a little bit of loving or a lot of loving. It needs a lot of loving. I'd put that in C tier then. What about another silent switch? Gazoo Boba Gums. Boba Gum. Such a cute name. Look really pretty. Very much like bubble gum or to me more reminiscent of like bubble gum syrup stuff that you took when you had chicken pox. <laughs> or like I, I don't think I ever got chicken pox. <laughs> yeah, it looks a little bit like Pepto. It's very pretty, very pretty, very silent. I would have to compare them to the other silent switches, but they're very smooth. They're great stock, I think, but they don't perform super well when you lube them. Oh, why is that? They get a little sluggish. Um, the silicone plus the loop on the top housing creates kind of like this sticky... It doesn't stick itself, um, but it it just this makes this weird kind of like high-pitched squeak sound when you press down on it. I don't know. Feel is nice, I guess. The key feel really isn't as nice. It kind of makes it a little sluggish if you use 205 grade zero. Oh, that's too much unfortunate. Yes, yeah, so I would mainly just use these stock. Like if you're going to mod one, go for the silent alpaca or any JWK silent switch. And if you're going to use it stock, go for this one. Ooh, yeah, that's quiet. Let's compare them next to each other. Here's a boba gum next to a silent alpaca. They're both nice. I like the silent alpacas better, I would say. I prefer the silent alpacas, but I really like how you don't really have to mess with the boba gums too much to get mm -hmm. them to sound good. Yeah, that's true. You don't need to film them. So that means they went above and beyond. So these go into S tier. <laughs> you don't need to do anything. They're silent. Feel good. Nice. Uh, what about glorious link switches? I have a yeah. I have a thing to say about these. I don't know if glorious would like it. The first time they sent me glorious link switches, they send the the creator switches. It was great. It was beautiful. Everything was consistent, smooth. And then when I go and buy three boxes by myself from their store, they were inconsistent as heck. Some were like crunchy, some were again bloop bloopy, and it was like what? These are completely different than what I had thought they were. Like I really liked them and then now I really dislike them. Glorious, uh, after the panda, I don't know, I guess they're just like oh let's come out with a linear switch too for gaming of course. So <laughs> it's like what just a 60 gram bottom out normal tactile. I think it's so going to be Texie made probably. Texie's making switches for everyone. So it's probably going to be a pretty solid-ish kind of switch if you get the stock one. I can't I can't attest to the pre-lubed one. I don't know who's doing the looping. So It's not good. It's not good pre-lubing. 
It's not a bad switch. It's just I just had a bad experience. That's all. It's a pretty switch too. Oh, it's, it's a hard one. If you buy the dry and you do it yourself, I put it in B tier. But if you buy the pre lubed, I'd put it in F tier. Ooh, KTT switches. The very pretty tropical Hawaiian kind of look. KTT switches are great. The tolerances are great. The housings are super tight. These ones, you have the wing latch housing, but the strawberry is also a cherry housing. So they have both types of housings now. Feels super smooth. They're all long poles, so they sound really nice. Ooh, nice. Um, and they're pretty. Yeah, and they're very pretty. <laughs> These are the kinds where you buy them in bulk and just put them into containers. Where mine are right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> sound really good. Yeah, Basically. they have like a really deep, low, kind of poppy kind of sound because of the long stem and the housing material. Uh, when you lube them up, they sound even better. Mm, let's take a listen. Take Rose first. And then Peach, I think was the name. And Sea Salt Lemon. And then Strawberry. They all sound very similar, but they sound great. I would put these in A tier. Nice sound, nice looks. Maybe you can lube the spring. Definitely, you probably could lube the spring. Then that would help. That we need more F tier. Let's do the cherry ones. There's so many cherry ones. Cherry silent red, cherry black, then cherry silvers. Lots of cherry. Cherry is cherry. Cherry uh, is uh, old school. <laughs> yeah, uh, people still really like them for the housings. You know, that nylon cherry sound is still very desirable for a lot of people but for these ones i mean stocks cherries are still going to be super scratchy there's still going to be a lot of housing wobble still going to be a lot of stem wobble can't use them stock no you absolutely can't use them stock i don't know why they're in every keyboard still that's uh, pre-built the silvers are they're a little bit uh, lower actuation than the other silvers it's a 1.2 millimeter actuation 45 gram actuation but the bottom is 80 grams oh it's heavy <laughs> who makes the 80 gram speed switch you know? that's like, weird my my cherry red broke so i don't have it with me today but i think everybody here should probably you know probably know what a cherry red feels like it feels like a cherry red i don't understand why my cherry silent red is not silent oh no it it is it is a silent cherry it just sounds loud yeah, it's very scratchy very pingy it's not very silent That's no silent it's still. not silent at all no. i compare that to a boba gum or a silent alpaca it's not even the same ballpark yeah Oh gosh, Cherry Silent Red belongs in F tier. Out of all of them, I like Silvers the best. So that's a personal thing. Their housings are useful. You can cannibalize them. Mm, I would never use them personally. But since they are a little bit useful, they can go in D tier. That's what I was going to say. It's well, probably a D tier switch. Yeah, it's not a great switch. Okay, we've got a lot of like really boring stuff. A lot of Gatorons. Kales. So Gatoron, yellow, silver, and red. Yeah. Uh, are all the same. Not too much to say about those. <laughs> one's a little slightly heavier than the other. One's a speed. And yeah. one's a red. They're very average. I don't know. Yeah. They're, there's nothing to say about them. We've got a lot of good options here. Those can just go away. You can buy the pro versions <laughs> of these same switches for one cent more per switch. That's true. Oh, Free lube for the win. All right. These are all going in f tier they're they're just no don't buy them dry this one's a kale box red it's a kale box red yeah not much <laughs> to say it's a kale box red there's these switches are just really boring i'm not a not a huge fan of most of them you also go into f they all go into f tier now that we've gotten rid of the boring stuff we can move on to a cap switch scatter on cap yellow it's such a minion simpsons yellow color very bright i don't remember it comes in two different types one has yeah. like the gold spring and then one has the normal spring and the gold spring costs more the other one is actually a cap milky so that one comes with a regular spring i think this one's the cap golden comes with a golden spring but it's not a milky housing it's more expensive Both of them are, yeah <laughs> By like 10 cents per switch or something these are not i i liked them when they first came out i think nowadays there's better options that you can get but they're not bad they're very affordable i wouldn't recommend the gold spring i don't know what it does you should you can say you're baller well, I mean, what happens is that eventually the gold plating flakes off 
<laughs> oh no, then it's just like littering gold inside your Switch. The cap stem, because it's a different design, instead of like stem going into hole, it's like stem going around pole. A little bit more stable. It can have a farty sound. B2, I think, fixed that. A Keyboard farty love sound. <laughs> Uh, just like that vacuum suction, like that little pop. Yeah, when I first got them, I loved them. I was like, ooh, pre lube switches, yeah, win. <laughs> they're good. I don't know if they're like A tier good good, but they're good. They don't need yeah, much fixing. Yeah, they're they're solid. They put them in there. They're pretty solid. Toss them in A tier. Boop. Yeah, cheaper inks budget inks. Speaking of inks, we also have 8008 inks. Never used these Made before. <laughs> Made to go with GMK8008 based off the Nike sports bra colorway. Basically a opaque ink housing with a yellow spring. Yellow like spring? Gather on yellow spring. Oh, I was like, ooh, a yellow color spring. Let me open that up. <laughs> it sounds similar to uh, Gateron Ink Black. Um, I forget if it's a little bit deeper or a little bit higher, but very similar. Let me find my Ink Black and we can try it out. Ink Black's definitely slightly lower, but it, the lightweight is nice. And these are limited run, right? So you can't just buy them yeah. anymore. And the color is, it's its nice, but it's not as nice as some of these other things we looked at. We haven't put inks anywhere yet, but if I had to put ink somewhere, probably B or A. Yeah, they're pretty solid switch. And Black Ink V2s, they just got retooled, so the they have uh, improved tolerances now. They're very popular with the crowd. All right, I'll put this one in B because they're limited. Not as good as uh, the stuff you can buy all the time. All right, um, let's look at our black switches. We have a bunch. Yaron box, box black ink or ink block, box black, so, something like that. And then we've also got the J-Wix and the ultimate black and the regular box. The black ink V2. They're hits. They're all hits. Black ink V2 is a, kind of also a legendary switch in its own right. They and are. As problematic as the word thaki can be and like other switch sound terms can be. Like it's one of the ones that has long been considered like the Thaki King or whatever. Like yeah. one of the Thaki's which you can make. The entire time I've been in the hobby, that's all I've heard. Get those, you'll get Thaki keyboard. And then you realize they're too heavy and then you're like, nope, I don't like these after all. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, they're too heavy for me. That's all I'm going to say. But I like the way they sound. Very Thaki. The J Wicks now, like the ultimate black, the one that looks like an ink, kind of like that. They're like a cheap version, they're cheap JWK version of ink. It's a comfortable spring, like a 58 to 63 and a half gram spring, um, but it sounds more like uh, like an ink top out. Ooh, let me put it on the same row and then we get some more fair sound. What's the difference between the ultimate black and the regular J Wick? The regular J Wick full black is a full nylon housing. Um, with a palm stem pre-lubed. It's gonna be like the budget JWK nylon. People like that nylon clacky top out down from it. Uh, people like the weighting of it. So that's really the reason to get it. It's a cheap, good linear switch. It's a cheap JWK. Right, let's listen to it. And then these are the ultimate black and the black ink V2. But for the price, it's a pretty good deal. And it's lighter weight too, so that's a win. Oh, so let me hop a keycap on the box. Box ink. Box ink sounds louder in a not good way. I'm not the one that's gonna say that black inks don't belong in S tier because then I would get hit and I'm not about that life. So, oh, they can go, they can go up there. No, I'll say it. <laughs> no, they belong in A tier. They, they don't, they need help. They need some help. I don't super duper love them. J Wix, pretty good, it's pretty good. Low clacky, affordable. I would put it in C and then I would put the ultimate blacks in B. That's not bad, that's not bad. We're, we're gonna speed run some of these things because it's getting late. All right, I'm just gonna put the things that I don't like out there first. This one, kale burgundy, pro burgundy or something or whatever. It's heavy, it's kale, hard to open up, it needs help. Why is it for pros and why is it heavy? 
already. That makes no sense. It's going in D tier. That just makes no sense. And then there's a, then another mystery one, but I think it's just Kale Red. And Kale Red belongs with all the other ones down there. And then this one is a Kale Black. We don't need that. I think the rest, we just have really interesting ones. And this was Peach that I was supposed to put. Are you looking no, at it's a not. It's a, split? yeah, it's a banana split. That's what it is. Yeah, we can't rank that yet the rest are very interesting so i think we can look at that except for nk uh silk olivia here that belongs where all the other nk things were and that was b tier okay now these are interesting let's do blue velvet linear oh yeah blue velvet linear it's a pme housing which is i think a palm art a palm alternative and it's a long stem palm long stem palm stem so basically it's a cream alternative from Texi. it's got a nice sound compare it to creams it's not as good as creams <laughs> stems are, are, are a lot more valuable than the housings it's got uh, a nice scratch <laughs> it sounds a lot more scratchy than it feels but that's a weird thing with with Texi pme plastic yeah the the bottom is, feels weird and it does sound sound worse than it feels i'd put it in d no yes d the weird one okay next is let's do banana splits for the longest time people are always asking me when are you gonna use banana splits <laughs> i personally do not like a lot of the tkc switches so i am biased in that regard but they're smooth very loudly clacky very similar to to alpaca molds they might not be the same exact ones but uh like again if you want to be kind of simple about it uh I'm probably a little bit wrong and whatever but basically a snappier thockier version of an alpaca or at least louder version of an alpaca definitely louder it's average yeah <laughs> JWK linears, you know. No, <laughs> my curl ran out of memory. No, I think that means. Oh no, no, they're still here. Oh, I thought I would oh, lose man. everything. Oh man, that was so stressful. I'm gonna save it. We are putting banana splits in its place, and the computer decided to just go nope in its place, which is C tier. This is why let's do thick thock marshmallows. Bought it all the way from Australia, I think. I think it was Australia. They look a lot like boba gums, except they're not. They're lighter colored boba gums. Very cozy looking colors. Yeah, so the, the special thing about these basically is the spring. They're a progressive 68 gram spring. That means it's going to feel a little bit bouncier than a normal 68 gram spring. What feels like speed, I guess the progression to the bottom is going to feel a lot different. I'm not a Switch Pro. For me, at that weight, it's really not that much different, you know, than, than another 68 gram spring or yeah, whatever spring. Yeah, it doesn't feel um, too different. Well, that, that's fun. Since it's sort of similar, it's very cute. Um, some people like the sound. Again, it's a JWK linear. I'm not sure which mold it's using, if it's using the same tooling as alpaca. Uh, materials are similar as well. Not sure of the exact blends. The fact that they're all using similar molds. You know, when you say JWK linear, you know what you're getting. Yeah, which means they'll go into... They're all starting to blend in my mind. Like, we've ranked over uh, 60 switches at this point. <laughs> Throw in B tier. I think these are Duroc Linears that are next. Yeah, it is what it is. It's smooth, <laughs> plenty smooth, uh, pre-lubed feels nice it's a safe choice it is a safe choice and they have a variety of spring weights so you get to pick whatever you want out of them it's safe it's cheap yeah i'm putting those into a tier pretty safe not a bad not a bad way to go telios not as popping as they used to be they were popular because stock smoothness at the time but now they're all linears are pretty smooth stock you know um, yeah they just felt kind of polished but now you have things like CJ, which is also polished, or Gadron X, which is also polished. Yeah, everything's uh, nice now, so you don't need to pay big bucks for zeal switches anymore. Except clickies, it seems like everyone's paying a lot for those. All you need to do is lube some, lube some springs, you're good to go. So probably an A tier, no B tier. That in B yeah. tier, you're gonna lube it, and uh, the fact that these are here <laughs> next to all these budget ones is just crazy. Okay, blue bubble gums. 
They're new. I don't know if the group buy has ended or not. It's got a palm stem, ink bottom housing, and a nylon top. It's essentially an unlubed oil king if you want to simplify things like that since a lot of people are familiar with oil king. Oh, when I first tried them out, I thought they were lubed and then I learned that they were unlubed and then I was like, well, you need to buy these because they're pretty great. <laughs> yeah, polished. They're polished stems, I believe. They're nice. Yeah, if you mistake a stock switch for a pre-lube switch, that's when you know to go get them. Okay, these belong in S tier. I thought they were pre-lubed. Okay, next is Hula, Hula Halos, which look very similar to what? those, but they're not. Halu Halos? Yeah. Oh, Halu Halos. Halu yeah. Halos. <laughs> yeah, uh, based on the uh, Filipino dessert, they do look very similar to blue bubble gums. They're essentially, again, uh, unlubed alpaca alpacas with a 63.5 gram slow spring they're, they're alpacas they're just slightly different than alpacas they're pretty alpacas that you can lube yourself nice <laughs> Anything that sounds like that is uh, it's sort of bland. Go in and see with those. All right. Lavenders. Yeah, lavenders again. Pretty nice. A jade, another JWK made linear. Another one of those. I just think the, the, the lubing on these is really consistent. Uh, the pre-lubing on these. Ooh. Ooh, this is nice. Full nylon housing. 65 gram bottom. That stands out more to me than what we just looked at. To pre lubed sound pretty dang nice. I would toss this in A. Okay, what about the Wuche onions? Yeah, Where so are these are also from JWK. <laughs> you notice a pattern here. <laughs> They're all JWK switches, I see. <laughs> JWK makes switches for everyone. I put these in a full build before too, and I like the way they feel, but I don't like the way they sound. I'm not sure if it's the plastic or the housing design or if both that's contributing to that, but yeah. It means it's it can't be it can't be helped. It means it's going into D tier. These are gonna allow huskies. Uh, yeah. Huskies. Huskies. I don't think much of them. I know they have a very long spring because I tried lubing them and they were sucked. Very uncomfortable. I think they're for a specific person. They're not for me. They need a lot of love. Throw them in B tier. Everything is alpaca. Yeah, everything is alpaca and everything is JWK. That's how I feel right now. Three more. The, the left one is going to be lychee. Dankeeps Texi lychee. The middle one is Texi porcelain blue. And the right one is Texi sapphire. We're going to finish it up. Yeah, lychee switches are HPE housing, so kind of scratchy housing stock but the stem is um whip so it's a super smooth stem stems also kind of wobbly and has really bad shrinkage issues it's like the worst of the taxi um whip i would say they're really wobbly and keycaps are just gonna fall off no that's the worst you hear the wobble they're smooth though. Extremely, extremely, extremely smooth. I would put it in D. Taxi Porsche porcelain blue. Beautiful looking switch. Kind of looks like a Telios, the teal Telios. Looks like a better Telios. Uh, super long stem, super reduced travel. It's like a 3.25 total travel. They're unlubed. You can feel how, how the bottom out is. It's really, yeah, it's just there. <laughs> it's just there. <laughs> They're beautiful. They're they're not what not what I would want in a switch, but beautiful nonetheless. Only a jar switch for me. It can go where all the other jar switches go <laughs> in C tier. You go where all the other jar switches go where you're pretty. And that's that's it. Alright, now we can go on to the last switch. Taxi rubies and these are v1s so i didn't get a chance to get the v2s that's cool the v2 is just an um whip stem version the v1 is a long stem it's the long stem version and it's slightly on the heavy side but it's not too bad the switches are also very pretty sort of glittery a lot of jar switches around here Sounds nice. Feels nice. I'll toss it in B tier. I think that's the whole list. I'm sure that we're only scratching the surface here when it comes to linear switches. Oh, yeah. There are like a billion, billion more that we don't have because that would be insane to buy every switch in the world. And then I would never ever make a make content about it because I'd just be hoarding and waiting. This is what we've got here in S tier. We've got, oh gosh, I've got cat problems now. In S tier, we've got 
Zaku's. And then we personally got my favorite to get around Milky Pro yellows because they're super cheap and the best. And Hobokey creams. And if you're into the silent stuff, Yazoo Boba Gums. And then the switch that I thought was pre lubed but is not uh, blue bubble gums. And yeah, that's S tier. We're done. Maybe we'll, we'll do this again in three years when everything has changed. All right. Well, thank you to Randy for being the switch expert that he is to keep switches in jars as decoration, as I know you all do. I don't because I don't have that many switches. Well, I do. It's just they're all in cardboard boxes and sandwich bags. But I hope you all enjoyed this and got a little something out of something. It's all opinions, all bias, some facts, some information. Does Randy have socials? Randy, please tell me you have socials. You can follow me on, I guess, at Randall Jew if you want. That's my main Instagram account. I haven't really posted anything, but if you want to see stuff, I'll post stuff. And also, he's very active on our Discord server as well, if you are interested in talking to him. Yeah, that's the main social, right? Join, join the Switch and Click Discord. Yes. Join the Switch uh, and Click yeah. Discord. 